I cannot believe what I am looking at. Cosmic Fantasy on the Nintendo Switch and in English. To find out how heck froze over, stay here for the full review of Cosmic Fantasy Collection. On January 25th, 2024, Adia Company Limited released Cosmic Fantasy Collection for the Nintendo Switch. Yahoo! A popular RPG series that was, for the most part, left behind in Japan. For a few people out there, you know the score. But for the rest of the world, let's get up to speed on what this actually means. Back in 1990, developer Telenet Japan released the first in a series of role-playing games for the PC Engine CD-ROM-ROM system, Cosmic Fantasy. The hook was that the game's story progressed through animated cutscenes with voiceovers, a very new concept at the time. Kazuhiro Ochi, who was well known by the end of the 80s, directed the animation. Anime voiceover superstars brought the characters to life. Oh yeah, one more thing. Some of the scenes were a little spicy. Wow! Cosmic Fantasy never reached the heights of Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest, but was popular enough to continue for five full games, as well as an anime OVA, one radio drama, and two manga books. One installment, Cosmic Fantasy II, managed to come stateside with a full English translation on the TurboGrafx CD by Working Designs. Over time, the template that Cosmic Fantasy had created became adopted by most of the RPG industry, while artists and programmers from the series created new works, including the Tales of and Star Ocean series that still exist today. For all of the impact Cosmic Fantasy had, the series was basically forgotten by the end of the 90s, and in the 21st century, remained dormant. Telenet Japan closed around 2007. Ownership of the game became unclear, as unknown company after company would buy up the remains of Telenet while the world moved on. As games of the 80s and 90s were reborn through virtual console and modern remakes, Cosmic Fantasy remained absent. The only re-release of the game was through an obscure Japanese website, selling each game for about $8 US. The only way for most to get a fix of Cosmic Fantasy was through emulation, which I fully support, but it came with a caveat, as without fluent Japanese proficiency, four of the five games were unplayable. I don't want to get into too much detail because I made a video all about the entire Cosmic Fantasy series back in 2022. Full spoilers in that one but a very fun ride. After that, you can watch the two-part episode that covered the cosmic fantasy manga stories that take place alongside the games. And you know what burns me personally? Only a few hours after I put a nice ribbon on this series and sent it out to sea, assuming that the world would never hear from cosmic fantasy ever again, an official re-release was announced. Well, that's great, but how does that Adam Sandler line go again? things that could have been brought to my attention yesterday! In December 2022, Adia released the first two Cosmic Fantasy games for the Nintendo Switch in both a standard card version as well as a deluxe box set with illustrations by Kazuhiro Ochi, a soundtrack, and some other cool stuff. You better prepare to pay up. $71.40 for the basic game, and also on the eShop individually or together, and 14,000 yen for the deluxe set. Yikes. But with that, the promise that a second collection with the remaining three games would come later, and that just maybe these games would leave Japan and become playable in English. Edia kept its word. Cosmic Fantasy Collection 2 arrived in December 2023, and I can't believe I get to say this, an English version of Cosmic Fantasy 1 appeared on the US Nintendo eShop on January 25th, 2024 alongside Cosmic Fantasy 2, which was already released in English, but is still exciting nonetheless. So if you had Cosmic Fantasy 2 way back when, learned about the series along the way, or are a newcomer today, how does the English Cosmic Fantasy Collection 1 fare? Let's take a look. First, the price. $49.99. Ouch. That sticker shock is gonna put off a lot of people. My first bit of advice is to wait until these have the typical eShop sale. Maybe you can snag it at one third or one half off. And yes, these are old games. 
They are the exact same versions you'd find on the PC Engine. Now there are pros and cons to that decision, but be warned that this is nothing like the Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, nor Sega Age's Fantasy Star, which were great. A lot of the following applies to both games, and if something only applies to one or the other, then I'll point that out. Before you start up the game, you get a menu to choose, CF1 or CF2. Each one has a sub-menu where you can set up your controls, look at a scan of the original manuals and discs, listen to all of the in-game music, and watch all of the animated cutscenes. There are a few things like credits and a list of initial backers, which probably won't get more than one look. You can also choose screen ratio, full, wide, or pixel perfect. I'm going with full. So let's talk about the cutscene, because they are a major part of the games. These are voiced in Japanese, all the same as the original games in the 90s. There are only English subtitles for these scenes. It would be great to have a full recording in English, but I guess that's too much to ask for. The in-game text in English is very hit or miss. This applies to both games, but I'm going to focus more on Cosmic Fantasy 1, as this is the first time that game has been playable in English. Whenever you use an item, it says things like the character uses a an herb. A an? That's the kind of formatting you'd find on an English test to give you a hint that the answer might start with a vowel. When you lose hit points, the S is also in parentheses. The text says, you search the treasure chest. It was empty. Well, if it was empty, then shouldn't there be something in there now? But the most egregious translation comes in the battles. The name of the characters and the enemies are reversed. Most battles are automatic one-hit kills, like many RPGs of the time, so it took me a while to notice this. Here's an example. The enemy thrashes at you. Then the battle's over. So, it attacked me? I did nothing? And I still won? It's very noticeable and frustrating in boss battles, because you are trying to keep track of your hit points and what to do next. You attacks the enemy. No, the enemy is attacking you! When a character uses magic, the sentence structure is correct. Well, good, it's supposed to be. But it makes this problem even worse because half of the battle text is correct and half isn't. It's crazy. This is by far the worst part of the game and should be fixed with a patch ASAP. Is it unplayable? Well, probably. It takes some major getting used to. If you can look past that, the gameplay is very straightforward, and if you have played most 8 and 16-bit RPGs back in the old days, you'll get it right away. The game stars you, which I guess is a pun on you being you, like in yourself. You is a cosmic hunter, kind of like a galactic police force. He crash lands on planet Norg after investigating a distress signal. Along the way, he will learn that Norg is being occupied by a dark overlord, Morgan and only the descendant of the planet's legendary hero, Titanus, can defeat her. That's the best I can give without any major spoilers. Again, I made a 45-minute video that explains it all. The game runs with your standard top-down view. You can interact with townsfolk and some objects by using the A button to open the command menu, with the options of talk, item, magic, equip, and search. At the bottom is the command Momo. What's that? He's your robotic cat motorcycle buddy who tags along. He doesn't engage in combat, but is used as a way to transport back to previously visited towns. It's especially useful if you're stranded somewhere with only one hit point. Magic can only be used at certain stages of the game. This coincides with Yu's development as he learns his inherent magical powers. Most of the magic is offensive and will turn on for certain boss battles, but in regular fighting, you'll need swords. Equip is a bit clunky, as you have to cycle through all the weapons to make your selections. Red denotes that something is already equipped. There is also one good thing. The armories will only sell equippable items to characters that can use them. And if you already have one item equipped, you can't accidentally buy a second one. Search opens treasure chests and not much else. The minus button also pulls up a separate menu, where you can check your stats, gold and experience levels. You can talk with each character, hearing a spoken message for anyone in the party at the time. You also have the option to load the game back to the last saved point. This menu also lets you see the world map, but it's completely useless. You have no idea where you are or where anything else is. 
The quest itself is very short and you could probably get it done in about 6 hours. There are 6 major stages to the game. First, getting oriented on Norg, fighting the 4 elemental bosses, then the final battle. Each stage of the game is blocked off and very linear. After major events in the story, some dungeons will close off or disappear entirely. Once you have fully explored an area, there really is no reason to go back either. You basically wander the map, will easily find the next town or dungeon, and repeat again after that area is finished. In each town there are weapon and item shops, as well as inns and pubs that are marked with different icons, and also houses that you can freely enter. The inn is the only place to save your game. Using a tent is the only way to save on the world map. There are no quick saves or auto saves like other games, so be sure to stock up on herbs and antidotes and tread lightly. There are many characters that will give spoken dialogue when interacting with them. The corresponding English text is provided. The towns are filled with very talkative people. Some of them provide comic relief and seem to speak English very well. A main character of Cosmic Fantasy is a merchant cat, Nyan. In Cosmic Fantasy 1, he appears in some towns selling rare items that are very helpful, but are also insanely expensive. Nyan will also get you out of a jam, sometimes for a fee. Nearly every town will have someone who joins the party along the way, but often won't fight with you. Each quest that involves townsfolk earns you experience and gold before you even start, so that is helpful. Yu battles on his own until he meets Saya, about a third of the way into the game. Saya starts off very weak, but eventually levels up to be a strong magic user. Her magic stays throughout the game, and it is necessary for survival. Both you and Saya's spells level up over time, becoming stronger while still using the same amount of magic points. Yu's magic has English names, while Saya's are in Norgian, I'm gonna say. As for the battles, they aren't as bad as you'd expect. There is an auto attack command that will take the battle to the end, usually in your favor, very quickly. There are commands for fight, item, magic, defend, and run. Boss battles are actually handled differently, with a different command menu. You cannot auto-battle, and the changes are a bit helpful, and help wake you up after dozens of useless random battles to say, Hey, this one is important! Don't mess it up! You will have to spend a massive amount of time leveling up. Each new area naturally presents you with new, more powerful enemies. But there is no way you can just tear through this. You have to raise about 5 to 7 levels after reaching a new town. Save at the inn and stay close to the town. If you take on a boss and lose, it's back to the inn and all that progress is lost. And it will happen a lot. When you lose, you doesn't die. He just has a bad dream. One saving grace is that after each level up, you get a full health restore. The in-game graphics are nothing spectacular. Bland mixes of green and brown in most cases, with lots of repeating patterns. Most of the in-game music was not on the CD, but played off the PC Engine hardware. Aside from the opening and ending songs, it's almost all chiptune, but the in-game music is actually very good. And if you grew up with a TurboGrafx-16 and remember soundtracks like Newtopia and Tricky Kick, you might get a few feelings of nostalgia for that kind of style. So that's Cosmic Fantasy 1, a tough game, kind of short, and an interesting time capsule for what was cutting edge in 1990. And the fact that this long forgotten game has finally been translated, a miracle. Let's move on to Cosmic Fantasy 2, first released in Japan in 1991 and brought to the US in 92. I was not as eager to jump into this one because I've already played it 30 years ago and just recently, but at the same time, I'm very curious to see how this game was handled. The working designs translation, including English voiceovers and original songs, is not used. Edia handled it on its own. This also includes character names, a few of which were changed. You being renamed Cobra is one example. One more thing about the working designs version. The company included a few extra drawings in part to tone down some of the steamy scenes, but also some that included the renamed characters and cleanup in general. Memorable dialogue like Calgon Take Me Away and Valiant to the End have been memory hold. The game stars Van on planet Idea. Here, an evil warlord, Galem has set out to conquer the world. The key to his unstoppable power is the pendant of the true princess of Idea, 
whose identity is unknown, but is actually Van's childhood sweetheart, Laura. When Galen figures this out, he kidnaps her and uses her powers to gain eternal life. Later on, Yu and Saya join the fight to liberate Idea, keeping the cosmic hunter angle of the story intact. I don't want to spoil the game too much beyond that. So what's different in this version? A few things. The title screen, for one, and the opening song now has vocals. The ending song is also different from that of the Working Designs version. Of course, there are errors in translation. Comparing the two games, you can see differences, but honestly, they don't bother me so much, as I don't remember each and every word of the script. But for the few lines that I do recall, I find myself let down by the text that replaces Victor Ireland's hard work. The most jarring one here is the spelling of Laura. L-A-R-L-A. Larla? The translation error from the battles in CF1 do not carry over to CF2. Thank the Lord. The revamped battle system reduces the need for a lot of text. As far as gameplay, which again is all retained exactly the same way it was in 1991, things get a major overhaul in Cosmic Fantasy 2. The A button simply works as a talk and search button, while B brings up the menu. There you can see a quick rundown of your party and choose different options. Magic, items, equip, status, load, and map. This time the map is much more useful, but still won't tell you exactly where you are. Van, or any other character, can move in eight directions and is a little bit faster in movement. The level grinding isn't as intense, but this is an RPG from 1991, so there will be some. You just can't avoid it. The battles are a bit easier to handle, with far fewer cheap deaths. But when it happens, back to the inn you go. At least in this game, staying at the inn is free. With two or more characters in your party, the battles can give you a headache because you have to manually move the cursor to the next character to select an action, and the auto battle function has been removed. Some elements carry over to the second game. The spells are the same, the shop owners have the same graphics, and some enemies reappear, despite this happening on another planet that has never made first contact. It adds some uniformity to the games that is nice, but the changes in mechanics, most of which are good, still make CF1 and CF2 feel very different. There are lots of cutscenes, over 25 in all, with many at the start and end of the game, while the rest are spread out intermittently. There is one element that was left out. In the Japanese version, there were extra voice recordings that enhanced the story. These were not accompanied by any animation, just a blank screen. These are removed from the US version. You really aren't missing much, but it should be noted. The game itself is much longer, split into multiple parts, wherein there is a different party leader each time, either Van, Rim, or you. Expect 20 hours or more for this quest. The graphics are improved over the first game. There's much more color to the scenery, adding some variety. Each item is given an illustration, which is a nice touch. It makes you want to spend more time at the item shops checking out what's for sale. The music is better too. More tracks come from CD audio rather than the PC engine itself. I don't want to give Cosmic Fantasy 2 the short end of the review, but other than these changes, most of what I explained in Cosmic Fantasy 1 applies here, so no need to repeat it. It is amazing though what one year's difference can make between two games in a series. CF2 is bigger and better than CF1 in every way, and a lot less broken, both in its 1990s and 2020s forms. Here is the final breakdown. Pros. Good in-game music. I like it, it's enjoyable, and each track fits the right mood. The songs with vocals are nice too. Lots of animation. This is why Cosmic Fantasy was created in the first place. The artwork is great and each scene helps move the story along. Some scenes will certainly be watched again and again. Good omake. You get original scans and access to all the media files without a code. Cons. Translation issues, especially in Cosmic Fantasy 1. The game is borderline unplayable. You cannot keep track of what's going on in lengthy battles when each action has the names reversed. The other weirdness is forgivable and is kind of funny in some places, but comparing this translation of Cosmic Fantasy 2 to the one by Working Designs, this one doesn't feel right. Brutally hard games. Stock up on elixirs and tents. 
Be prepared to take an hour to level grind before each new leg of the quest. Don't throw the switch across the room when you are repeatedly sent back to your last save point after trekking for 30 to 45 minutes and then come up just one hit point short on a boss battle. No graphical upgrades or improvements in gameplay, controls, or saves. There is something to be said about presenting the game as it originally was, but adding a second layer where you can save state, rewind, or even fast forward would really go a long way. Price. This game is absolutely too expensive. $50? I recommend waiting for the first sale, but even then, it's still too much. My final grade for Cosmic Fantasy Collection on the Nintendo Switch using the patented GTV rating meter is D. It's hard to recommend when a better Cosmic Fantasy 2 exists on the Turbo CD. Just emulate it. It's free and easy. The real draw here is Cosmic Fantasy 1 in English, and Edia screwed it up. Patch these fatal translation errors and I will revise my grade to a C. The games are a drag and mostly exist for us old timers who love to punish ourselves with ugly and slow RPG mechanics for nostalgia's sake. If someone just happened to be strolling through the eShop and came upon this title, unaware of what it was, I guarantee that will be one unhappy camper. To sum it up in one sentence and quote me on this one, I paid $50 for this? Yeah, I took the monetary loss, but I knew I was going to. I love the Cosmic Fantasy series and want to support the effort and see what it was all about. And maybe for the other three super die-hard TurboGrafx CD fans still alive out there somewhere in the universe, they did too. I'll be okay. I mean, if this video makes 17,000 views or something like that over the next 35 years, I might be able to break even. All we need now is Cosmic Fantasy Collection 2, and I'm telling you, it will be a double kick to the ding dong if that thing doesn't come out in English. I have never truly gotten over Cosmic Fantasy 3 being canceled by working designs in 1994. And we are so close right now. Come on, Edia, whoever you people are, don't drop the ball. I'm